you mainly have guys like me. You have a guy that is clearly on steroids. If I didn't know him, I wouldn't think he's on steroids. In those terms, he's kind of correct. Like in terms of performance enhancement, that's why people choose to go that route versus supplementation. Now, when I talk about shady characters, we're now confronted with a new guy named Andrew Huberman, and he's very well spoken. Now, he doesn't say much. That's just false. I think what he's saying is he's reciting studies and stuff that other people have done. I don't know who to listen to, to be honest with you. So when I watch Huberman go on and tell people how they can up their testosterone fourfold or their growth hormone fourfold, that is not only not true, somebody in his position would know it's not true. Again, the fourfold thing, because he uses such colorful words all the time, I'm not even sure if I can believe that the fourfold thing is true. You guys think it had any value for someone like The Rock or some of these celebrities to say, yeah, I use some stuff here and there? All right, Roger family, we usually come to you guys with amazing sound quality, but the first minute of today's episode is a little bit choppy, so please be patient because it's a really good one. Also, if you're watching us on Spotify, you're listening on Apple, it would be amazing if you could leave us a review of the podcast so we can continue to reach more people as that helps the podcast grow. Enjoy the episode. All right, well, our boy, Andrew Huberman, he's been kind of under fire from some uh, memes and some various places, and we saw this video from Chael Sonnen, so we'll check this out and uh, see what this is all about. Chills. So then I'm, I'm still looking though, right? And the supplementation space, the do what I do and have the biggest arms in Westland, like that space has always interested me for one reason, it's filled with liars. Now, for the most part, that's just what that is, right? One, one of the reasons that so many things at GNC has been painted over the years is there is no regulation on that. Our Food and Drug Administration does not oversee supplements. So now you have snake oil. Uh, stuff that they do regulate, the stuff that the FDA does check, still gets sold to us uh, in inappropriate ways, in my opinion. All the stuff that you see with the heart healthy stuff, a lot of times there's like a bunch of sugar and a bunch of crap in there. Mm -hmm. Cinnamon Toast Crunch. I wonder if Cinnamon Toast Crunch has the heart healthy label. I would imagine so. It's a part of a balanced breakfast. And it has a grain. Lot of cholesterol, uh, cholesterol, right? Yeah, it's a whole grain cereal. Whole grain is recommended by most FDA approved dietitians. Mm -hmm. Yo. <laughs> this is bullshit. Yeah. Literally just exploded all of that, by the way, like in far of four, five seconds or less. Yeah. One thing. I used to have like a $20 cap. <laughs> but I could get one thing. My dad would take me to the store, and every year I wanted to go into GNC. And I would go look around GNC, and whatever guy on the package I deemed to look the best, and I bought that product. And of course it didn't work. They, they never work. They're, they are absolute garbage. But they still exist, and you still have them. And, like, that isn't going to end anytime soon. So as, as I'm snooping around that space, you, you'll generally have somebody like me. Like, like, I've had forums before that will ask me, are you black? Are you white? Are you Hispanic? Are you Asian? I will have to make a box and check it that says I'm shady. That's what I write. The kids I like best in life are the ones I right outside of the principal's <laughs> office. But within the space of supplements, which is nothing more than snake oil, you mainly have guys like me. You have a guy that is clearly on steroids. Possibly. You'll have a guy that might have done a little bit of... If I didn't know him, I wouldn't think he's on steroids. So I, I, I'm curious, the, the language he's going to be using, because I've seen some of his stuff, he likes to speak in like these absolutes. You have a guy like me that's obviously on steroids. He doesn't, he looks like he could be totally natural. Looks very healthy, yeah. Looks very healthy. So it's like already putting yourself, like someone that absolutely looks like on their steroids also looks really, really good. I'm not saying he doesn't look good. He's fit, mm -hmm. but he doesn't look like someone who I immediately assume he's on drugs mm -hmm. unless he told me. And then I'm like, oh, okay. Am I wrong? What do you guys think? Yeah, I agree with that. And then further, I would say like uh, in terms of when he says that none of this stuff works, uh, that would be interesting to learn his definition of how well he thinks a supplement should work. So mm -hmm. in comparison to, you know, blasting 400 or 600 milligrams of testosterone, uh, there has not been uh, an over-the-counter supplement that has really matched that before. Um, so in those terms, he's kind of correct. Like in terms of performance enhancement, that's why people choose to go that route versus supplementation. Um, they don't work that way, but I don't really see, I do agree, like maybe years ago, mm. it was like, you did see the bodybuilders putting that stuff forward. I think there's enough information out there now to recognize that, uh, this product doesn't equal this result. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, I, I do understand that kids can still be swerved that way. Um, but I think, again, there's enough information out there. Chris Bumstead and a lot of these guys, I sell stuff, I'm on stuff. A lot of these guys sell stuff and they also use performance enhancing drugs. Um, 
hopefully the audience isn't being like swindled by that, thinking that the whey protein that they're going to have is going to add six pounds of muscle in three months. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, the whole argument of like, none of them work uh, again uh, in comparison to what, because in comparison to full on anabolic steroids, does anything just across the, all across everything, does anything work as good as that? If you say like, Oh, well working out, you know, definitely works. Like, Oh, you can work out in 12 weeks or so and make a huge difference. Like, well, you can make a difference, but like, like, like steroids, like, no. So then you can't say like, oh, working out doesn't work. Right. Cause it obviously does. So like that statement right there is like, it's tough. And I know because. Even exercise, you're bringing up a good point. Cause they say that exercise makes up about 10% of your calories. So I think some people choose to say, fuck it, the hell with it. Because you don't get results. <laughs> mm -hmm. You do exercise, you do the right things. And uh, you still aren't notching your calories down enough to really have a noticeable difference. And so people get frustrated. Yeah. So that doesn't mean that exercise doesn't work. Mm -hmm. It just means that it's a slight change over time. Yeah. So it'd be cool to like kind of get some back and forth and understand like, what do you mean by doesn't work? I hope one day we can get Chael on the show. Mm -hmm. Like even, even though I'm going to be critical on what some of the stuff he's saying, like it's still be cool to have him on the show one day. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah, it's like one of the best fighters that I've watched in my time. Like, I love so his exciting. persona, too. I think it's fun. <laughs> bad guy. He is a bad guy. Mean street coffee. That's fucking cool. All right. I'm in jail. It's one of these things. But he's got a good physique, and he's got a camera, and he can speak the language, and all of a sudden, you're going to give his thing a shot. On the outside chance that for the first time ever, it might work. It never does. Ever. Not, not a maybe. Not sometimes. Never. Now, when I talk about shady characters like yours truly, we're now confronted with a new guy named Andrew Huberman. And he's not a shady character. As a matter of fact, he's from Stanford. And he's very well-spoken. Now, he doesn't say much. He's one of these guys where he's got the smart and the like, but the smartest thing that he does is make a beautiful headline, stay very calm, talking to a camera, and say nothing. So I, I couldn't, like, encourage you to go and watch one of his videos. I've done that. Pause. Probably 50 of them because the headline. I don't know if he's just trying to say that to be mean. <laughs> this is the thing. Like, I've heard certain people say, oh, yeah, I listen to Andrew Huberman and I can't listen. It's just, uh, you know, it gets really, it, it makes me feel it's tired. Heavy it's heavy. But the thing is, is if you are truly in paying attention, you're not trying to multitask and listen. He goes in deep on these topics. You got to pay attention, though. And if, now, if you're listening passively, there are so many big words that are used that like even me, when I'm listening to some of his shit, I'm like, I got to look that up real quick. <laughs> Ooh, I got to look that up. I don't know what that means. But he does a really good job at usually defining what mm -hmm. he's talking about. But it is a show that you need to pay attention to. So, again, maybe this is kind of to color some of the things he's about to say but mm -hmm. that's just false dog <laughs> like I, am, I, am i wrong like what do you um, mean i think maybe what he's saying is like he's not coming up and saying it like 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 when you're t telling somebody about habits and stuff that you've done your whole life yeah like you're not reading that out of a manuscript i think what he's saying is he's reciting studies and stuff that other people have done it's not stuff that Andrew Huberman himself, at least as far as I, I mean, I'm just, I'm throwing it out there guessing maybe that's what he's talking about. Like he's just reading off studies and shit that he's researched. It's nothing that he's necessarily coming up with himself. No, I, I get what you're saying mm -hmm. there. But like, for example, if he talks about something when it comes to sleep, this isn't about like how Andrew Huberman sleeps. This is like, what does the research say? And then what can you apply from the research? Mm -hmm. So it's like, yeah, you're going to do a deep dive on studies because that is your show. And then you're going to say, how can I take this study and apply it to my life as an individual? Mm -hmm. Us here... We talk about the things that we do because we see the benefit. We are all athletes. We are all applying these things and taking what fits and what doesn't. Mm -hmm. So we tell you guys what we do and what we've seen work for other people. That's not the same thing Huberman's doing. We're not referencing studies with every single sentence we say mm -hmm. because we are we are applying constantly, right? Mm -hmm. So plus we don't have that knowledge either. Yeah, mm -hmm. we're not we're not here sitting looking at studies all the time. We bring experts on, we apply, and we see what works, mm -hmm. right? That's what we like to do, and we perform at a high level. But the thing is, again, it's like to say that oh, he's not. I listen to him, and I, he's not saying much. It's like because maybe you're not paying attention to what is being said. That does that's just not true. Mm -hmm. It doesn't sound like he's had the opportunity to really like sit in the classroom. And that's what Andrew Huberman has done is he created a classroom like environment. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes we have, you know, we've had people on the show before that have created books uh, that have made books uh, for people to read. And sometimes 
some of those individuals want it to be kind of like a textbook where they want that to be something that could be taught at a university. And other times people want it to be a simple handbook, like the book I wrote, The War on Carbs, is something you can just pass, slide across the table to just about anybody. Really easy to understand. Yeah, I think what Huberman's done, he's done the best job in the history of this industry of separating facts from feelings. And when you look at uh, Bio Lane, Lane Norton, he's Lane Norton's done a good job of that too, but... Lane Norton says that, but then Lane Norton is uh, very passionate. And so he gets tied up in the feelings of it too, he does. because then he'll start blasting people. Huberman for at least a year straight. And I, I'm really proud of the fact that it seemed like a lot of it kicked off by coming onto our podcast. And then he really started to go on a tear. And I don't remember the order of when he was on Rogan and stuff, but, and he, he's done an amazing job with his own podcast. He just went on a tear because I think that he recognized that there was a need for this. He found a niche. And I think maybe uh, the stuff that Chael Sonnen has seen has probably just been little short clips and snippets of what Huberman says, but he's giving a lot of context all the time. Right. Yeah. yeah Huberman said <laughs> he's giving a lot of context every single time to the stuff that he states. So if he says, you know, eight hours of sleep is the way to go. Well, he's got to talk about deep sleep. He's got to talk about REM sleep. He's got to talk about what do you do to get to sleep? Uh, what do you do to stay asleep? And you might have supplement recommendations in there because quite frankly, people are suffering and people are suffering from their own crappy habits a lot of times. And uh, we don't want to be in a position where we're not sleeping, but we also are kind of addicted to our phone. Mm -hmm. We're addicted to food. We're, so I think Huberman's done a good job of saying like, you know, here's the shoulds, you know, here's all the shoulds that you should do. And here's the reasons why. And hopefully all the shoulds, woulds and coulds, hopefully those are encouraging enough to get you on the right path. But if they're not, maybe you're going to need some magnesium. Maybe you're going to need some mm. zinc. Maybe you're going to have to try some of these other products um, because he has a show and he's trying, like, you need to support the show and the show is free, right? But the, the, the show is free in quotes. It's free the way that this podcast is free. It's free the way a lot of podcasts are free and it's free via having some sponsors mm -hmm. to Here's help push the agenda forward. Here's a quick example. Um, I know I have. I mean, I think you guys have. But I, I've like I use those blue blockers, right? The amber blue blockers mm -hmm. at night. Mm -hmm. And I use them because I have noticed that they do help me feel tired much faster. There is a big difference when I use them at night with light on and TV versus when I don't use them, right? But Huberman's talked about that before. He said there's no evidence to back this up, so I can't say if it's beneficial or not. But we have, and we know many people who have done the same, who've seen that benefit, The 3% right? that we own in that company uh, <laughs> assures me that it works, and you should go over, give them a discount. Promo Andrew. code power project, yeah. Mark's joking. We don't actually even have any company like that. Yeah. But Yeah, Mark. Yeah. <laughs> but the thing is, it's like, that's the thing. Like, the dude is going to do everything based off of us, re what research and science says. Whereas, like, we care about that. But we also care about the things that haven't been researched yet. And there's a lot of things that we have been doing that now science comes to back some of that up mm -hmm. as being beneficial, like 16-8 fasting. A lot of the nutrition community for the longest time was like, oh, you're going to lose muscle. Now a new study fucking comes out this year and they're like, oh, OK, well, if you have that 16-8 and you keep calories equal, keep protein equal, you actually won't lose muscle. Wow. We've been doing that shit. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, so it's it's. Is yeah. what it is. And it, don't don't get me wrong. I love Andrew Huberman. That shit, the stuff that he puts forward, like Mark said, I think we do we needed it. But what the example you just gave is like a more of an argument for I think what all of this was like how it started off. I would much rather listen to you two guys talk about your sleep routines, your fasting routines, or habits, or whatever it may be, and how they've been successful for you, as opposed to what the literature would say. Like I don't give a I don't care about really what that says. I want to go and talk to the people that are practicing it. And I, th again, I think that's what he's getting at when he says that he doesn't say anything. Um, again, we're like, you know, trying to figure out what someone else that we don't even know at the moment, like what they're trying to say. So it's kind of silly to even be going back and forth on it. But that's where I was getting at is I'd rather see what you guys are doing and what practices, habits that you guys have right now, as opposed to, well, this study says blah, blah, blah. It's like, well, let me just go see what the guys that are crushing it are doing instead. I go back and forth on that a lot myself. I don't know who to listen to, to be honest with you. 
you know, I might want to listen to a little bit of Jay Cutler. Like Jay Cutler might have some good advice, especially when it comes to diet and when it comes to performance enhancing drugs. At the same time, you know, uh, that's also a guy. I, I myself pushed it to some pretty extreme limit limits. He pushed it, you know, beyond anything anyone could possibly really imagine. Mm -hmm. But also like just because I listen to some stuff from Jay Cutler, does that mean that I can't pick up some knowledge and some good safety tips from Huberman, you know, mm -hmm. so if Andrew's talking about Andrew Huberman, if he's talking about testosterone, um, I think one of the first times he talked about, uh, using some TRT was on our show. Um, and I kind of joked to them. I was like, Oh, now you're writing about it and talking about it because you just took it last week, <laughs> you know? So there's sometimes there's practicality, but if you've been somebody who's been studying it and rubbing elbows with people, um, I'm not a material expert in really much of anything, I would say, but I have rubbed elbows with a lot of people over the years uh, that know a lot about sleep, that know a lot about steroids, that know a lot about A, B, C. So by default, you start to become very knowledgeable in these areas and you can share it out with people. But I think people having a variety of people to go to is wonderful. Mm -hmm. Why not give people a good the people that want to go to the doctor and, and understand information from him, the people that want to go to us and learn information or to Rogan. Um, and it doesn't mean that you have to tunnel vision, just listen to one person, which I think is kind of the point of some of these videos and contesting Andrew Huberman, I think is great because in my opinion, that's what science is all about is that you should be, it, it doesn't have to be in a distasteful way or it doesn't have to be in a harmful way. I, th I think that we can, say, Hey, look, man, I kind of think this guy is full of shit. Um, but I think you need good evidence on how to back it up. If you think what someone's saying isn't, uh, accurate. Continuing on. Line was beautiful. How to never procrastinate, how to up your testosterone, blah, 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 about dopamine. <laughs> I've listened to him and I'll do the seven and eight minutes. And by God, I mean, he doesn't say anything. He's it really is a skill how he can go round and around, but when you have somebody from Stanford that does not have the checkered pass, he's going to be the guy that comes in to take going to be the new guy on the white horse wearing the white hat, right? He wears all black. When he is dishonest, now it's a lie. And that's very different. You don't ever hear me call someone a liar. Never. When people are wrong, that's what I say. I say that they have it wrong. And there's a massive difference in lying as opposed to having it wrong. As opposed to you misspoke. Massive. I don't like that. He's a liar. He's a liar. I don't like that. But this gentleman that isn't like the rest of us, he's much more polished to come in and say the things that he's saying. He would, of course, know the difference. And I got to go online. Look, I, I never looked it up. In all fairness, I never looked it up. When I was a little boy, my mother told me what it meant. That it's not a matter of saying something that isn't true. It's a matter of saying something isn't true when you intend to deceive. The example she gave me, if today is Tuesday and somebody says, what day is it? And you tell them it's Wednesday, but you actually think it's Wednesday. You then have not lied. You're just wrong. So when I watch Huberman, Go on and tell people how they can up their testosterone fourfold or their growth hormone fourfold. That is not only not true, somebody in his position would know it's not true. So by my mother's definition, he lies. I don't like that he's doing that. I don't know why he's doing that. And it's the biggest problem within our space. Can you pause? It's the biggest. Just here's briefly my thoughts on this is that I think Huberman is normally like citing studies that he sees. Um, maybe occasionally it's somebody that he knows or has seen something from. I don't think he's like pulling these things out of thin air. However, where I would agree, this is where things get kind of, uh, things get kind of, uh, uh, cloudy and blurry a little bit. When somebody, when somebody says that someone increased their testosterone fourfold, uh, but they're also talking about maybe their own usage of TRT or they're talking about other people that they know that use performance enhancing drugs when it's in the same podcast or in, in the similar like paragraph, it's kind of making you think, Oh my God, mm -hmm. that thing's going to increase my testosterone fourfold the same way that performance enhancing drugs are going to do. Not saying that Andrew Huberman's ever said that I've never heard him say that, but I do think that that people are making comparisons there and they're like, I'm going to go buy that supplement. I'm sure when he recommended Fidogia and some of the other things that it probably sold like fucking crazy on the internet when he talked about it on Rogan and things like that. Talked about it on ours too. Yeah. yeah. On our show as well. I think, you know, he was on our show, like at the beginning of the pandemic and stuff like that. But 
and talking about the powers of sleep and uh, growth hormone being produced from the sauna and maybe even the cold plunge and things like that. Yeah, it does. I mean, working out will increase your growth hormone levels. Will it be the same as running four IUs of growth hormone every day for, you know, three years? I, you know, I don't know. But again, I haven't heard Huberman say that specifically, but I think that is an area that can get cloudy from time to time. I think on two bears, when he was on two bears, when he talked about the Vidoja and Tonkat, and also maybe it was when he was on our show too, he has said he has seen in some people their testosterone increase by up to three to 400 points. Mm. So that could be someone going from 300 to 600 or 700. Mm -hmm. um, but th that's not, uh, and again, I, I'm very curious, like if somebody can comment below and let us know where maybe this fourfold thing is, it, when we look at like how low testosterone is in some men these days because of their lifestyle factors, because they're not eating good foods because maybe they're not in shape because maybe they're not exercising. They're not getting the type of sleep that they need to get. A lot of young guys have low test and they think they're just destined to have low test. Once they start getting their, you know, their hormones in check, once they start getting their sleep, their habits, I meant to say habits, not hormones. Um, things can increase. Mm -hmm. And then let's say then they do start to supplement some other things. Like when we had uh, Adam Hotchkiss on the show the other day, and he mentioned how he's run into some people where they fix their thyroid and their mm -hmm. testosterone came up, boom, it like came up 300, 400, 500 points, not by addressing their test, by, by addressing their thyroid. These are things that people don't really think about. Mm -hmm. They mainly think, oh, I need more tests. I need TRT. That's usually the immediate place that guys go because TRT is so popular. But a lot of these other ancillary things can actually be that thing to get you the increase that you're looking for, to get you to to decent levels and even above average levels, right? So again, the fourfold thing, because he uses such colorful words all the time, I'm not even sure if I can believe that the fourfold thing is true. I have heard the 300, 400 points because of Fedoji on Tonkat, but again, maybe that has worked for some people in that way. Because I remember hearing him say that, but he didn't say research said, he said that I have seen it work in certain people like that. That's not a crazy claim. Mm -hmm. I'd also say that uh, a little bit unfair, in my opinion, of Shale Sonnen to say that he's not like the rest of us, because I found it my experience with Andrew Huberman to be different. Andrew Huberman came here to Super Training Gym. He did work out with us. He did some deadlifts and stuff with us. You taught him how to bench. <laughs> yeah, yeah, taught him how to bench. He, uh, which, which all of that was a little bit of a surprise for me, because you don't know how each person's going to be when we invite them here. But he was down. He hung out. Uh, he's in good shape. Yes. He he's uh he's got a big neck. I mean that's admirable. When someone's got <laughs> thick. yeah. When someone's got a neck, right? It's like you got to kind of be like, yo, bro. Like yeah, yeah. yeah. Hot goes off to you. <laughs> Congratulations, right? Um, he looks like he's in great shape. Uh, he hung out in my house and stuff, and he was super nice and just he spent he spent some time. So I I kind of disagree with that statement a little bit. I do think that's actually what surprised me about him is he was more like the rest of us than I expected. What you got, Andrew? Uh, I, I just, I'm thinking again, going back to like stuff working and not working because like in SEMA, you've had your labs done after taking, uh, I forgot how many weeks of the- uh, Podosia and Tonkat, I did like eight weeks of it. And, and, it, and it, it worked. My luteinizing hormone went up quite a bit. I don't think my test went up that much though, but that's because I already had great lifestyle habits. Yeah. I already take care of myself. But my LH went up a lot. Yeah. And then I'm just thinking again, like what, what works, what works? Like what if somebody starts taking this stuff and all of a sudden they're just like, well, shit, I'm on, um, basically I'm on a test booster. My testosterone is going to be high and therefore their workouts are better. Therefore yeah. their habits are now in check. And I understand that that has nothing to do with what the supplement claims to, to be able to help you with. But again, did it work? Yes, it worked. Mm -hmm. So it's just, I don't know, it's strange. And then, yeah, him kind of going after the, uh, I guess, personality or whatever, or like integrity of Andrew Huberman without knowing him. Yeah, that, that's just, you know, just kind of a bummer. It, it's a tactic, though. We talked about this tactic before. Oh, yeah. What did he say? He's not like the rest of us. What does that do? Separates us him and versus makes... them. Ding, 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 yeah. ding, ding. And then, and then, of course, the, the fourfold thing's interesting. And then what Mark was mentioning, like, Again, when people have their arguments back and forth or their debates, they'll bunch things together. So it seems like, 
uh, X supplement does da 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 da. Remember Jay Cutler when he did this. So now you kind of associate this supplement with Jay Cutler, mm-hmm. and it's just like a weird tactic. And that that's for debates, and that's why like debating sucks sometimes. <laughs> What'd you do? Take a piss? Uh huh. <laughs> that was good. That was fast. All right. All right, here we go. Just one. I'm a big fan of Hulk Hogan, and I forgive him completely. But Hulk Hogan is the example that people my age will always turn to. He denied that he did anabolics. He said he just said a lot of prayers and took vitamins and exercise, right? It turned out to not be true. But now you wasted 20 years of somebody else's life because we believed you. And we tried to simulate you and we couldn't get the results of you. John Cena. That is that. That sounds heartfelt. <laughs> like when he's saying that we believed you, Hulk. <laughs> he sounds <laughs> truly. That's hurt. why I made this video. <laughs> yeah, this Maybe really this has to that. do with his Hulk trauma. <laughs> Yo, god damn. I wonder if he had the weight set that you guys had. Yeah, that'd be sick to get that again. Yeah, uh, train, say your prayers, and take your vitamins. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he did. I don't know. Vitamins? Mm-hmm. What kind of vitamins? Yeah, what are Maybe it's Fidosia. Vitamin yeah. T. <laughs> 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 Vitamin T, that's a t-shirt. From Hulk Hogan, or The Rock has taken it. But what they could do is they could just tell you the truth, which is legal. It's appropriate, and it's helpful, obviously. Obviously. They don't need to keep that secret selfishly to themselves, and that's where some of the problem comes in. And Can we pause like- for a second? You guys think it would have any value for someone like The Rock or some of these celebrities to say, yeah, I use some stuff here and there? Uh, again, I, I do think if somebody is and maybe it's a big part like if you're out here like we are talking about this stuff all the time we need to be open about the things we do because at the end of the day we're sharing our habits but there's an educational aspect like Mm -hmm. i'm doing this and this is how i'm doing it but someone like that the rock isn't an educator on health and fitness even though people the motivator yeah he's a motivator people look up to him for that um but he's not out here talking about that shit every single day so He's also not trying to say that he doesn't do them. He just is not talking about it. Just Mm -hmm. doesn't talk about it, right? I think it's fine. I think it's just right. Yeah. Personally. Yeah. I'm conflicted on it because obviously you don't want, like, I don't want my son to look up to somebody like The Rock and, you know, again, all the things that we warn people about, like, I want him to know that, like, that's, you you can get there naturally, right? You can, you don't have to start sticking needles in your, you know, in yourself. Um, But at the, on the other side, I also hate it when people are like, oh, he's on every steroid under the sun. <laughs> it's like, well, hold on, guys. Like, okay, the look Rock at has always been a special look person. Look at him when he's 16. Yeah. You know, I could work out and take all the steroids for the rest of my life and I'll never look like he did at 16. Like, he's a fucking animal, right? right. And he's been working hard for a very long time. Yeah, remember how wide his shoulders are? Like, there's a couple of pictures when he's yeah. young. You're like, what the fuck? Yeah, he looks like a, like a cartoon character. Yeah. You know something, like, it's... some One of our, actually, listeners got me on this book. I read David Epstein's book, Range, but he has this book called The Sports Gene. And it was mm. a comment that somebody left on our TRT video. So I got it, and I'm on, like, chapter eight or nine, but... In that book, he was talking about how there is some research done on um, bone density and how like bone density, the the bone bone density is like scaffolding for an individual's ability to hold a certain amount of muscle. Right. Mm -hmm. So if someone over time has a certain amount, a a certain bone density, Mm -hmm. there's going to be a limit to how much muscle they can actually hold on their frame. And individuals who have much thicker bone density are able to pack on more size. Now, I'm not saying the rock's natural or anything, but you do look at that picture of him at 16. His frame Mm -hmm. is literally huge. Natural or not, and obviously everyone's comments could be he's on drugs. Maybe he is, probably is, I don't fucking know. But you can't deny that there is a genetic aspect to the amount of muscle that that man or people like him are able to hold on their frame. That's going to be different. Everybody's different. So, And one thing that Chell does is he tries to lump, like, for example, he said, I'm obviously on uh, performance enhancing drugs. Mm-hmm. Not obviously. You got to tell. You, you, you got to tell if you are, right? <laughs> but he lumps himself in and people that are listening are like, uh, yeah, yeah, you know, obviously, you know, like uh, most people are on performance. Most athletes are on performance enhancing drugs. The, and it's just, no, athletes are fucking different. I'm going to shut up after this, but even in that book, The Sports Gene, he goes into NBA players and the difference between the wingspans and the height of black athletes and white athletes in the NBA. Um, One thing that they tend to notice is that taller athletes in the NBA tend to have wingspans that are larger than their height. Mm -hmm. And on average, the black athlete, I think it's like a, a, it's a differential of like 1.7, right? Which is the, the, like maybe he's a six foot eight with a seven, four wingspan. 
But the white NBA players, even though they're just as tall, their wingspans generally aren't as long. Why? Because West Africans that are usually, uh, you know, have his history near the equator generally will have longer limb lengths because of the geography of where they were born and where their ancestry is. Shit's different. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like people in mm -hmm. different places are different. So we can't we can't lump everybody in to be exactly the same. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. And then, so like the other thing that I wanted to mention, that I forgot was also like, it'd, it'd be cool if everybody was open about it. So it wasn't such a hot topic and it wasn't almost like taboo, you know, like, like, Oh, is, is the rock on stuff? Like, I don't know, probably, but you know, whatever, or the rocks on everything. He's juiced to the gills. It's like, it'd be cool if we just didn't care. That's why I think it would be cool if he did mention it. And then we just, you know, because like people, especially celebrities, something controversial will happen. And then like two weeks, everyone <clears throat> forgets about it. It'd be pretty dope if he was just like, yeah, I'm actually on, you know, whatever, 200 milligrams of TRT. And then in like yeah. a month, we all forget about it. I think people unfortunately can't afford to, you know, like their associations and things like that. It's just right. People, people aren't cool with it. They mm -hmm. get, can be weird about it. I also think that the rock may have been in compromising positions before where he's had to talk about it. And then people are like, well, you said this, you know, this many years ago and now, you know, so it's just, I think it can get messy for people. Yeah. Unfortunately, people get all up in arms over mm -hmm. it. And even though people are so open about this these days, like I don't think it's ever going to be a point where people don't care because this is the thing. People are still open, but there are guys who are on steroids and are open about it. There are guys who are not on steroids and are open about it. But those guys who aren't on steroids, people still won't believe they're not on steroids because they look like a guy who could be on steroids. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, it's just like they're at this point, it, it does it. That we are at a point where people are open, at least mm -hmm. in, at the fitness industry, where many people are open. Not everyone. Mm -hmm. Many people are. But even so, it's still something where if you look like you could be on steroids, I mean, you're not jail, but if you look like you could be on steroids, people will think, mm -hmm. and, and you're not, people will think you are. Yeah, because, I mean, look at yeah. other people who are. There's insane <laughs> genetic differences between people, too. That are, you're, I mean, you're mentioning it, but it's just... The level is insane. Yeah. You know, uh, Corey Schlesinger, uh, he's the strength coach of the Phoenix Suns, and he's like, man. Oh, my God. He's like, if you just seen what I've seen for like two years, you would be like, I don't think training really matters that much. <laughs> 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 he's like, there's just some really talented people out there th mm -hmm. that have different life uh, circumstances. I mean, you always hear about the white dude on the farm, you know, the Brock Lesnar type of thing, right? Um, you hear these stories all the time and then he's got some like crazy farm boy strength. Mm -hmm. Um, he might be an example of somebody who's like, well, he's on them too. <laughs> but at some age he wasn't on them and he was an absolute fucking wrecking machine. And that genetic difference of where he was at 17 or 18, um, you hear stories, you hear people talking about how other people were getting thrown all over the mats and just this kid was mopping the floor with him and then he would flex afterwards and he was fucking jacked as hell and people were like what is going on over there on those mats because <laughs> at wrestling tournaments there's multiple matches going on at one time but everyone kind of stopped and pivoted and were like what is happening over there why is that man beating everybody up mm -hmm. and let's not such a freak many people start much earlier like you started lifting mm -hmm. and you when you from you always have the story the first time you benched <laughs> the first time you laid like your hands on a barbell <laughs> how much did you fucking bench at what age um it might not have been the exact first time that i benched but i just remember having my friends come over and i benched like 105 and i was like 12 or something you know or 11 something like that and my friends they could barely move the bar they were squirming with the bar <laughs> and 65 pounds and stuff like that and then it wasn't too long after i think i was like i can't remember the exact ages and exact weights so forgive me for some of that but i think i might have been 14 and i benched like 240 245 or something like that <laughs> i couldn't bench that like what the fuck you yeah, know what right? i mean so it's like <laughs> again the, there's a variety between everybody yeah. and their starting points are different. Yeah. I had to take his arms to bench that. <laughs> so you have a hot date coming up and you look in your closet and all you see are the old ugly clothes that you usually wear and you're going to wear tonight. <laughs> it's time to end that, guys. That's why we've partnered with Viore Clothing because they have some amazing athleisure clothes that you can wear in the gym when working out, but also clothes that you can wear on a date 
or during Hanukkah or whatever. <laughs> you can wear these clothes wherever and they feel amazing. Some of our favorites are the Ponter Performance line, which has dream knit fabric, which literally feels so soft on your skin. But they also have this. This is the Rise Tee. Also soft, also feels nice and fits great. And they have a lot of amazing clothes that you need to check out to step your fashion game up. We're trying to help you out. Andrew, where can they get it? Yeah, absolutely. You guys got to head over to viori.com slash power project. That's V-U-O-R-I dot com slash power project. And you'll automatically receive 20% off your order. Links to them down in the description as well as the podcast show notes. <laughs> a Huberman who breaks into the space going around making friends with all sorts of people, comes out and tells you that through a cold shower or any other <laughs> truly dishonest thing that he has said, which is yeah. oh, to upping testosterone. This upping is getting good. Hormone. Entertainment. Is so untrue, but it's provable. <laughs> you found these pieces like this before. Broken and I had <laughs> Sorry, that was so funny. He tells you through a cold shower, you know, the creature does something. <laughs> Picture Andrew Huberman like in the shower telling you like, hey, you got to do this. Yeah. I just wonder how many people just like were sitting in cold showers just like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> Up in my test. <laughs> and Huberman is just like in his lab laughing <laughs> with an evil with an evil laugh. <laughs> <laughs> he's just He's like my plan. My plan is working. He's got the, he's got his whiteboard with all the things that will they fall for it? Yeah. And he just crosses that one off the list and like, oh fuck they did. Dude, Let's see what else we chat. got. That was fucking funny. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, we need this in the fitness, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is great. Place more dicks. I've even had Coach Gray come out and they want to talk about Shale's wrong. Shale asks you then to bring me the person that you've done it with. Uh. You get all these fitness guys together and they say that you can achieve certain goals that you could put on 20 pounds in three months of muscle clean. They'll tell you that after a lifetime in it, but they'll never bring you the person they've done it with. There would be massive money that somebody would give. They're going to give you about $2,500 a pop. Who's saying this shit? <laughs> uh, he was saying something about Duke, Greg Doucette. Uh, Has Greg ever said that? So, well, <laughs> you always got to be careful. You put something in Coach Greg's mouth, you yeah. didn't say he will, he well, will come for you. Here's, this is actually really interesting. Um, uh -huh. So, as Greg Doucette is uh, promoting one of his products, I don't remember what it's called. Not Turkester. His cookbook. It's it has tricasterone in it, but it has a supplement called NMN, which is supposed to be like oh, a super uh, key ingredient. However, what's interesting is that um, he actually will just quote and then even show Andrew Huberman talking about it. So like that's I why remember it's, that. it, yeah. fits, it fits really well in with this conversation right now. So again, so I, I don't know if if uh, he has said like he's shown people like if you said said anything I, like that, but like that's just funny that I we're picture, coming full circle. I picture this like going off like uh <laughs> Jail Sonnen's like producer. Yeah. Uh, leaves him like a voice note on his phone. Hey man, I, I found this video. We should do something about, uh, you know, Andrew Huberman. He sends him over like a clip and uh, like, hey, he gets there and like, hey, did you watch the clip? He's like, yeah, I kind of want to listen to some of it on the way over. And like, all right, well, you want to do that today? And he's like, yeah, fuck it. I'll just do it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> he's just going off the cuff and he's just ripping Yo. on someone that he doesn't know a ton about, it seems like. It really seems like that. It's, it's funny as fuck, though. I'll say that. It is great. Oh, man. <laughs> I'll put a bonus on that of a quarter million dollars. And they'll give you the 90 days and they'll do anything that you ask. And if you, but if you get them here of lean, clean muscle and three, they will give you this kind of, but these guys don't try to get it. They don't try to get it. They don't know anyone that's done it. It's not true. And I don't know why. Every fitness guy, including the guys that juice, will tell you that you can get those results without juicing if you're willing to work hard enough. It's not true. And Huberman is claiming <laughs> all over hell and gone that through showers, just for one, he's got all four times. <laughs> just through a shower that you can up your testosterone four times. What? No. <laughs> what? No. His message is really falling apart. <laughs> Yo, Chael, what the fuck, dog? <laughs> Hey, if he's tell if 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 Hubert actually said that, that's wild, dog. <laughs> Who did that? But I don't think he did. <laughs> no, he ain't talking like that. At no, all. he's not like a bodybuilding coach. <laughs> <laughs> you can increase your testosterone four times by a cold shower. And it's it's funny because he's I, like, there's the dopamine thing, the cold punch. <laughs> Maybe he's mixing up testosterone and dopamine. Could be, could be. Because remember, we we've talked about that. You mm -hmm. know. 
So it's uh, but it's it's kind of funny because he's like, you know, br- bring me the proof of whatever yeah. you guys are claiming. It's like, well, can you bring me the proof that they're making these claims right now? Yeah, that right. shit sounds wild. I think the fourfold <laughs> thing actually has to do with growth hormone, but I forget what it was in reference. So you can probably YouTube it. Yeah. Probably look it up. Nah, yeah. this is more fun. But but, but <laughs> well, guys, I just mean like as part of this, we can look at that too. Yeah, yeah. But guys, the uh, when we're talking about like cold showers or cold plunge and dopamine, there has been like research done on. Um, dopamine increases from like cocaine, sex, and then getting in really cold and Mm -hmm. getting in the cold has a higher dopamine increase in maintenance. You can maintain that dopamine level for hours higher than Coke. So, and we've done cold plunge before. It does feel really great afterwards, but getting in is fucking That's why we're installing some shower heads here in the power project (laughs) as well. (laughs) Just do the, do the whole podcast, the cold shower. Shivering the whole time. (laughs) It burns body fat too. Oh, yeah. It turns it into brown fat. Mm-hmm. And, Just an excuse for us to shower together. And lipoproteins or something. I don't know. That sounds right. It sounds good. Who Huberman said it. Oh, yes. You know, pause real quick. <laughs> <laughs> you know what something you should just do? So, like, yeah, yeah, man. Hooper said that shit. Yeah. Just yeah. for everything. Yeah, man. Cold showers. Increased growth hormone five times. What? Oh, Hooperman said it. You can check his shit out. <laughs> Research. <laughs> it's it's the new, I heard it on Rogan. <laughs> well, after, it is. And, and it's uh, amazing because after all the diligence that he has with uh, safety, pro- you know, he's like, <laughs> you know, hey, like this is, uh, this is what I do and it's separate from this, right? He, mm-hmm. he goes over everything like so thoroughly. So to have people just randomly say, Dude, like, it. this was recommended by... <laughs> I could just imagine a Stanford dean showing this to him, like, did you say this? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. What about him getting oh, roasted dude, no by wonder. Rogan about the temperature of his, wa- of his water? That was pretty good. <laughs> yeah. They were going back and forth on that pretty good. Because he... No. Oh, that was How cold funny. did Huberman say he had it? I think 50. D or 55. Hopefully 55. Rogan was I, I had upset. To, Rogan had a hard time moving on from that. Yeah, you, you really went in on him for that shit. Dude, I had mine set at 50 and I thought I was good. I had to, I couldn't do it. I had to bring it back up to 55. Dude, it was, anyways, another conversation for a different day. <laughs> I feel you. I feel <laughs> provided it and he never will. That has never happened. <laughs> that, that is something you, you have to, you have to be profoundly ignorant to believe, but you have to be a, almost a bad person to say it. <laughs> my wrestling this isn't one guy I'm telling you you don't know one guy and you're a doctor and they're sticking this like he shot on somebody you know he's yeah. sticking with it he's not gonna give up yeah. yeah Stanford you probably drove through town stopped over the cafeteria but whatever it is with the Stanford what stopped at the cafeteria <laughs> one guy at a team of guys I had them my freshman year my sophomore year my junior my senior year it's about 60 guys but when those years were done I got them again I got freshman and sophomore junior and senior year in the form of college when that was done I did another 22 years, B- big teams, right? Big teams, but lots and lots of guys. Every single day we did cold showers. Every single day we lifted our asses off. Every single day we saw it. I mean, what a coincidence. You probably don't know very many people. You've probably not done that with the cold showers and the hot and the exercise and the fasting we had to make weight. We did absolutely everything that they're claiming ups your testosterone. This isn't an opinion for me. Not one person's did. Not one person's. This is silly. <laughs> When I took testosterone, which was as recently as a week ago, <laughs> I could not up it four times. On exogenous, pharmaceutical grade testosterone, I couldn't do that. And he's telling people mm. through sauna, through cold shower, through fast. I'm going fast here. He needs better gear. That's a lie. Hey, pause, Andrew. What do you mean by that? Well, my testosterone was at like a 350. Before TRT? Before TRT, I took uh, initially because, you know, as these things go, you you kind of get like a prescription and then you see where you go from there. Mm-hmm. I was taking 250 milligrams a week. That shit bumped up to like 2,500. I don't know multiplication tables and all that shit, That's but that was a lot. <laughs> you see, what he said there too, it's, it's interesting because Trail is a, pro- he was a professional athlete. <laughs> he was a UFC fighter, right? So you got to probably already be pretty healthy or pretty decently hormonally healthy to be in the UFC, right? Oh, absolutely. So for like him talking about his experience on TRT, potentially maybe he didn't even, TRT is supposed to be replacement, right? But did he need it? He doesn't even, I don't think he even really knows like if him or anyone on his team, if they were indeed doing those things, if they did increase their testosterone, because they probably didn't get it checked. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why Mm -hmm. would they be getting it checked? Yeah. They may have increased it. I mean, an increase of testosterone is not automatically uh, cause a net gain in muscle mass out of nowhere. 
<laughs> you don't right. fucking feel like going Super Saiyan or some shit. Like after you, after you, like you know, he starts sawing and cold plunge. You don't feel like Goku. Like ah, no. you, the, like <laughs> a lot of the like all the things we talk about are a a culmination of mm-hmm. all the habits yeah. over time. So it's not like we just started cold plunging and then we were like, oh, <laughs> or we just went to the sauna a few times and oh, you know, I like, would say the cold plunge does that even more to you, more more so than a shot of testosterone. Oh, uh, you mean the immediate feeling? After yeah, you? yeah, yeah. You do feel really fucking yeah. good. And yeah. even just 30 seconds of letting cold water just run in the back of your head mm-hmm. in the shower gets you a little revved up. Mm-hmm. Um, testosterone, in my experience, I've never had it like rev me up uh it it can help you be more motivated kind of definitely throughout every day uh but again you're not like raging it's not anything like an energy drink or anything like that yeah this is (laughs) i really like the latter half of this video it's really entertaining but uh, one thing that again i it it's somewhat disingenuous by him it's like the way like andrew puts things forwards is never a magic pill type of way. Mm-hmm. It's never like you yeah, do never this. Seen that. Yeah, if you do this, this is going to happen. Mm-hmm. You see it a lot in fitness where people have their turkesterone and then you take turkesterone. You, yeah, your test is going to go up and you do so fucking magic, bro. Like mm-hmm. you see that a lot when certain people in fitness, but like when we talk about things and when Andrew's talked about things, it's never do this one thing and your life will be changed. And that's how he's kind of making this sound. Which isn't true, dude. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but it's funny. Yeah. <laughs> I'll say this. It's definitely funny. He's putting forth information. Yeah. He knows it's a lie. <laughs> you can look at his little skinny self. He's never done it. Whoa. He'll never get somebody that done it. And all he'd have to do they is do it. probably weigh the same. Oh, easy. yeah. <laughs> and if you're making claims like that, it's not a matter of jail coming in and telling you, go get somebody and test them. If you're an honest guy, you'd have already had it. You never would have made the claim that they can go up four times. You'd have never made the claim if you didn't have the evidence. So you can't find a guy, you won't find a guy, but you haven't found a guy. And that's a little bit of a problem for Mr. Huberman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Interesting. He, 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 he switched the argument though, right? Because first, wasn't he talking about the Fidosia and then it switched over to the cold showers? I have the, well, he, he or, referenced... Or, uh, was he talking about Fedosia? I think he, he didn't even use the name the name Fedosia. He was talking about... Or maybe, I just imagine. Basically, I think it's just trying to put forward that he thinks that Andrew Huberman's a liar. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Kind of seems fair. like that was his mm-hmm. message, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, in what we've seen in our experience, uh, seems like he's been a pretty big positive. I think a lot of people are jealous of him. He's moving really fast. He didn't even really start out trying to be in fitness at all. It didn't seem like. No. Mm-hmm. Just seemed like he kind of ended up there because fitness people happen to gravitate towards him. Yeah. And again, I think he does a good job. Like he only recently, in my opinion, I've listened to a lot of his shows. Only recently, in my opinion, has he started to share his own opinion. He hasn't even really talked much about his own habits, his own disciplines in, until a little bit more recently. And he's been interjecting, uh, he's been more opinionated lately. And I, I found that to be really cool. I actually complimented uh, him on it a couple of days ago. I was like, I think this is really cool that you're starting to insert uh, more of your own commentary that's uh, a departure from just the science because I think it's helpful. Mm. But I think he's doing an amazing job. And again, I just think people are like, what the fuck, man? Why does this guy get all the shine? Where's the rest of it for the mm-hmm. rest of us? Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. It's like, it's, it's very odd because again, everybody has different starting places. There might be someone who does implement some of this and their testosterone goes up or doubles or triples. And that is very likely because a lot of, a lot of people don't have great habits these days and it's not even their fault. You might be a parent to multiple kids and you can't get sleep. And it's just like you're overwhelmed and you don't take the time to take care of yourself. You implement some habits as far as getting good sleep, getting rid of processed foods, Fitting in a fucking cold shower and a like, mm-hmm. like, and boom, your testosterone doubled. Whoa, right? That can happen to some people. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. It, it's it was a funny video. I'll say that. Yeah. Um, real quick, has he ever mentioned uh, getting in the cold uh, does boost testosterone? He, I okay. I'm not gonna say. I don't. I haven't heard him mention that. I, I heard him mention the benefits on dopamine mm-hmm. and losing brown fat and the research cool. has backed that up but perfect test, because wow. what i was going to say was like he's not the first person to come out and talk about getting in the cold being beneficial 
It's just that mm-hmm. he has a big target on his back because what you said, Mark, like he went from zero to two million subscribers, what seems like in a couple of weeks. Mm. And I think he was on our show. And then two weeks later, he was on Rogan. You, so, sh- uh, you sure he was on Rogan first? I, I think, it, yeah, there was I a two weeks. Was, yeah, I think he was here first. Yeah, there was oh, a okay. two weeks thing where he was here and then he was there. So he got his big break with us. <laughs> 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 oh, man. Power Project family, if you're trying to increase your muscle mass, if you're trying to lose body fat, if you're trying to stick to your nutrition plan, if you're trying to get fit, pretty much if there's anything you're trying to do for your health, we know that sleep is the biggest determining factor to help you get from point A to point B. That's why we've been sleeping on eight sleep mattresses for probably more than two years now. And the main reason is the technology behind the Pod Pro. Now, the Pod Pro is like the Tesla of beds. It will change its temperature based off of how you're sleeping during the night. And if you you have a partner that's sleeping on the other side, they can have their own temperature settings. We all sleep hot here and I used to wake up in a puddle of my own sweat. Gross. That doesn't happen anymore because of the eight sleep mattress and I've been getting the best sleep of my life. Now, if you don't want to replace your mattress, you can just get the Pod Pro cover and you can put that over your current mattress to get all the benefits of eight sleep. But if you also need to replace your old nasty mattress, <laughs> you can get the Pod Pro cover and the eight sleep mattress. Andrew, how can they get it? Yes, yeah, so you guys got to head over to eightsleep.com slash Power Project, and you guys will automatically receive $150 off of your order. Uh, again, 8sleep.com slash Power Project. Links to them down in the description as well as the podcast show notes. But yeah. What do you guys think of it? I, I want to, like, guys, if, if you listen through the podcast, let us know what you think of Chael's video. And if if you think there's any part of it that's legitimate or that maybe we missed or maybe we're, maybe, uh, you know, maybe we're simping for Huberman. Right. Yeah. Where, where were Are we, we unfair? Or what, like, yeah, maybe there's some some you know Chael fans that made their way over here. Like, where were we unfair with what he was saying? Yeah. Like, I want to know because I, I think we did good. I don't know. Andrew, see if you can find a, a clip of him talking about like the four times thing, like four times testosterone, four times growth hormone. It might this part might be a little clunky, trying to research mm-hmm. this and trying to look this up, but it might might have some, uh, might have some merit. I mean, people are breaking up clips of him all the time. I mean, how many clips do you see a day of Huberman? He's like all over the place. It's, Absolutely, it's not just his show. It's like other people are other people are clipping his content and, and creating uh, their own YouTube channels from it. Yeah, know? right. There's <laughs> stuff all over the place, and so um, he's you know ends up talking for a few hours sometimes on some of these shows and ends up saying a lot. So uh, I wouldn't doubt that he talked about you know increasing your testosterone and increasing your growth hormone and. We definitely have heard him talk a lot about uh, dopamine, but, you know, do these things have an impact on your day to day? Uh, I think they do. I think they have a huge net positive for you in the long run. It's just that most of the stuff might take a while, you know, you develop in a new habit and you starting to go the right direction for a little while. it, It might, it might unfortunately take like months. It might take years before you really start noticing the uh, the impact of all these things. So a, a quick search just uh, pulls up a video of Huberman talking about increasing your testosterone by 400%. But I don't know if mm-hmm. that's what Chael Through was getting what? at. Uh, it just says proven method to increase testosterone and we can pull it up and watch it. I do think on Rogan too, they got into all kinds Sex of different things. Increases. Sorry. I was going to say, I think they got into all kinds of things on Rogan. I mm-hmm. know that Rogan pulled up a clip, but I don't know if it's when he was on the show mm-hmm. talking about how somebody had prostate cancer and they utilized the cold plunge every day and it helped that individual with that problem. Yeah. Do you guys want to check out this video too? Sure. Let's check it out. Also, I want to do, I do want to mention this. For example, Two Bears, right? Two Bears, One Cave is a fucking huge podcast. And the, I think... Huberman is probably their top four podcasts ever. And he was on there recently. They have podcasts that have gotten Dang. five million, six million, whatever. And I think their Huberman episode has four point something million views. Wow. And that is an entertainment podcast. Mm-hmm. So that's just like it it is wild to think about how far reaching a lot of his information has been. It's it's outside of fitness now. Mm. It's it's general <laughs> yeah, he's done something that no one's really there hasn't been anybody in fitness Damn. who's done that yeah. everybody has kind of wanted to do that mm-hmm. but he's the first guy i think mm-hmm. that i've seen and didn't even start in fitness that's it's well, fucking i awful. guess he can't like count arnold because he's just like arnold mm-hmm. it, it, arnold arnold certainly did it bert kreischer being on trt is amazing he was <laughs> <laughs> talks about his gear. It's did so you see funny. When Tom like, yes. injected him on air. That was great. Uh, let's so check good. this out. All right, let's see what's up. 
increases testosterone. However, abstinence also increases testosterone mm. even further. Oh, fuck. It's important to note that there's a huge range in terms of the levels of hormones, testosterone and estrogen between individuals. And it actually occurs within individuals across the lifespan. Testosterone will fluctuate across the lifespan. Testosterone is going to be relatively low pre-puberty in males. During puberty, it's going to skyrocket. And then current numbers are that it drops off at about a rate of 1% per year. Although we're going to talk about some data that show that there's actually tremendous variation in testosterone levels. There's actually a lot of examples of men in their 90s who still have testosterone levels that mimic pubertal levels, which is remarkable and wow. speaks to the huge variation in testosterone levels across individuals. Pause. Competition is a powerful... I'm sorry, like, I, through that right there, I think that kind of goes into just the power of maintaining habits, maintaining, like, doing activity, working. Mm -hmm. There are people, like, in, in other countries, and people in this country, too, that stay working into older age, physical labor. Like retiring by 65 isn't the thing. And you see some of these people and they look like they could be 40 and 50 at 70 and 80. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it's it's a difference in lifestyle. Like we were just watching a video by Vigorous Steve and you guys should check it out. But like the studies that were done on those decreasing testosterone levels were general population people in the United States. 52% mm -hmm. who had obesity. I think he said 52% were on medication. And then they're like 20 something percent or 30 percent percent were obese. So mm -hmm. these are things to think about when we talk about these things. Mm -hmm. I think we're always aiming pretty high and people are expecting a steroid or a workout or an exercise to do so much for them. But what about just not losing stuff? You know, that's a really wonderful capacity to have. What about just holding on to some strength, holding on to some muscle mass? Um, you know, if you're listening to the show right now and you're 30 years old and you uh, are maybe fortunate enough to not have gotten addicted to food and you're not overweight. Look, man, if you can hang in there and just stay about where you are, I know that mm -hmm. nobody wants that necessarily for them, but if you can stay where you're at until you're 60, 65, 70, uh, you're going to look around and you're going to see that everybody else probably has more body fat than you. They probably have less muscle mass than you. They're probably in more pain than you. So I know that we want fitness to like rip us up and shred us up and uh, allow us to bench 405 and all this kind of stuff. But there's also benefits of it that are, that are not talked about enough. The, our elderly people, they fall and get hurt. And when they get hurt, they die within one year of getting hurt. They <laughs> fall and they hurt their hip and then, and then that's it. And I think that people people used to think that that was directly correlated with muscle mass loss, which it kind of is, but you lose muscle mass by not sending a signal to your body to maintain strength. And the strength will help to increase and to keep your bone density in check, mm -hmm. which will also send a message to your body to keep the muscle mass that you have on there. And if you're not eating the protein, mm -hmm. you're not following through with everything that you need to do. To, to make sure that muscle mass stays on you for longer so you can live longer and still move around. We've talked about the little things we do each day. Like I jump rope every single day and I do some jumping stuff just so that don't lose that ability because people stop jumping. Athlean X actually made a video very recently. It was a few days ago. I saw a piece of it where he said he keeps a 42 inch box in his gym that he just mm. jumps on once every single day because most people stop jumping at a certain mm. point. You don't think about it, and we've talked wow, about this before, yeah. but Damn. most people just stop jumping. Yeah. And then a few years later, you try to jump, you're like, whoa, I haven't done that since fucking high school, right? So if you can just do things to send your body this to the signal of, like you mentioned, not stopping, jump once a day. And he, Jeff actually mentioned something very cool. You guys should go check out that video. Maybe we'll link it below here too. But he said, some people don't jump, and I do one jump every single day. At the end of a year, that's 365 <laughs> jumps. That's 365 more jumps than most people do every single year. Mm. That adds up. Mm -hmm. And coming down off of that that's box again is going to be big for bone density. Mm -hmm. Dang. Okay. I think we're good. Do you want to yeah. just uh, wrap her up? Take us yeah, on out of here, Andrew. Yeah, sure. All right. Well, again, let us know what you guys think about this uh, this topic, this conversation, this back and forth. Because, uh, yeah, this is, I want to hear everybody's comments down below. And then also, if you're on Spotify, don't, uh, don't forget we have a, uh, a comment section over there as well. Just drop the comments and then, you know, I have to approve them. It's kind of a weird 
thing, but just do it anyways. We'd appreciate those and uh, just curious, see what you guys have to say. If you're on YouTube, do the same thing, but hit that like button, subscribe, all that good stuff. Follow the podcast at MB Power Project all over the place. My Instagram is at I am Andrew Z and Seema, where are you at? Discord's down below, guys. Join in. Let us know what you think. At and Seema Yin Yang on Instagram and YouTube and Seema Yin Yang on TikTok and Twitter. And then after this video, we'll have the I think we did three podcasts with Andrew. We'll have them linked here. You guys can go check those out. Mark. Anderson Silva, you absolutely suck. Remember that <laughs> yeah. promo that he did? I Dude. don't. Oh, wanna... my God. Is I that just... a Chael Sonnen promo? Yeah. yeah. He just grabbed the microphone from Rogan, and he just mm. like, was like, Anderson Silva, you absolutely suck. And then he had a war with Anderson Silva. You guys, you guys remember yes, the match? Yes, you know, I absolutely. See if do. you can bring up that uh, he, before we leave. You got to bring up that. Uh, you and Sima, you're going to love this. I looked up. I was looking at this. Is a massive uh, jujitsu right here. Yes. yes. I was oh, looking at pictures of Chael Sonnen while we were. He while was we were such a good. I mean, he's still a good fighter. He's a good fighter, but like a good fighter. one of the pictures that popped up was Anderson Silva's just like shin chopping right here on him. The trail was actually very jacked in that fight. Yeah. Very jacked in that fight. Yeah, he was winning that fight. He the was, whole fight. He really? was winning he was, the whole fight. Yeah, he was winning. He was uh, pretty dominant. I'm going to uh, skip ahead a little bit and make sure the audio is not on. But How did Anderson end up winning? Dude, you got to watch. No spoilers. That's a while to almost beat Anderson Silva. Dude, he... Shit, he took those on the chin. Dude, he fucked Fuck. him up for... I forgot. I, I don't know if they were going five rounds back then or if it was a championship fight, but... We'll just say five rounds straight. <laughs> Fucked him up for, well, you'll see. <laughs> That's why he always has the joke of like, I see pop people commenting on his videos of like almost champion or like mm, yes. best. I mean, it, that's very interesting. Okay. Just skip ahead for time. 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 Oh, shit. So again, dude, fucking him up bad. There's <laughs> something that happens. Uh, it's very subtle, right? It already happened. Is he going to get triangle? It already happened. Yep. He ha he got wrist control, right? <clears throat> he got a good punch in there. Oh, fuck. Dude, and then they're, they're seriously, like, the clock is about to be, like, it's almost over. Like, oh, literally, the no. fight's almost over. No. Triangle armbar? Oh! So he had wow. the option, right? He had the option to do either one, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was doing, he was doing both. The, the fight's done. Yeah, because Chael, uh, he he was trying to kind of basically cheat right there. He tapped. <laughs> but he was trying to pretend that he didn't. Yeah. He kind of just gave like a little, you know, he gave like a little uh -huh. one. <laughs> I've seen that. Because he, yeah. yeah, he's a little bit unsure of it. Some people do that in jiu-jitsu tournaments where they'd be like. Yeah. yeah, see how he's. Oh, yeah. And then he just kept fighting. Yeah, yeah, Just yeah. rewind just a pinch. I love, I love the, there's a punch by Anderson Silva that set the whole thing up. He gets, he gets in a really good shot. And then it's like. He whacked him just enough just to, <laughs> like, make him not pay attention to his wrist anymore. Fuck. Right there. Ooh. And now it's like it's he's locked. got that and he's locked Damn. in. Damn. Ugh, dude. And I, I think that Anderson Silva knows that he's Don't, fucking oof. doomed. You know what I mean? He knows <laughs> that, that Chell Sonnen's done, I think. Fuck. Look at him. Just, like, calculated. Dude, that's wild. I, like... Isn't that neat? Jiu-Jitsu. But those little things make you think it's, like... That, like, I wonder how long was left in that last round, but what if Chelsea think, did beat Anderson Silva? What would the story be, right? Because he was winning that fight. Yeah. Oh, what dude, would hands this, down, what would, he, he would have won unanimously if he just hung on. Let me see if fuck. I can figure out before you... That's wild. That's really I think wild. there was a minute left, okay. maybe 30 seconds. I think uh, Anderson was uh, just, he's taking too many shots. He was trying to, you know, do some of that, and he was mm. getting hit. And then getting hit on top of going against someone who's such a good wrestler. Yeah. Probably. Oh, okay, yeah. So it was a little bit longer than I remember, mm. but a minute 50. But was still. left. Minute 50 to be a champion. Fuck. That's, in, that's insane. Oh, I did see the, the highlight of uh, Kamaru Usman's brother. That man's a giant. He's mm. huge. Yeah. I wonder how tall he is. He's like 236, Shit, 240. Man. He's a scary looking man. <laughs> Just He's knock that big. guy out. Yeah. He's big. I think he has uh, some conditioning to work on. Because when I saw one of the fights he had recently, he was... He's a big guy. That's a lot of weight to lug around. Mm, so is. hopefully he can get that squared away and be amazing. I'm at Mark Smelly Bell. Strength is never weakness. Weakness is never strength. Catch you guys later. Bye.